In this lecture, we will see how to design uh, Butterworth low pass filters. The contents of this uh, lecture are going to be first thing is that uh, we will see how a higher order filter, say Butterworth type, can be uh, implemented in a cascade of uh, lower order filters. So, this idea is very crucial because it will allow us to uh, break down any big, bigger or higher order filters uh, in terms of smaller first order or second order filters. Uh, and this is important because uh, we have already seen uh, how a first order uh, low pass filter and uh, second order low pass filter can be implemented. So, if someone tries to design a single circuit containing uh, representing a higher order filter, then there will be a lot of complexities involved. So, we always try to break it down to uh, simpler circuits. And then uh, we will see that uh, how a higher order Butterworth filter can be implemented uh, in terms of those simpler circuits. And to keep the thing simple, we will keep uh, uh, DC gain equal to 1. So, the case where gain is greater than uh, 1 will be considered in uh, next lecture. So, to arrive at what condition should be satisfied, so that we can uh, cascade to smaller uh, filters to create higher order filters, we will first uh, uh, adopt a Thevenin model of a filter. So, in the Thevenin model, uh, we have a certain input impedance, output impedance uh, of the filter, and open circuit output voltage represented by the transfer function into the input voltage. So this is uh, open circuit output voltage. That means when load is infinite. So each of the smaller uh, order filters will be represented by this model. And now uh, we are going to cascade uh, two such filters with transfer function H1 and H2. And then uh, we will try to find out what will be V out in terms of uh, the input. So here we have taken a source V in, which has certain uh, internal impedance RS. And uh, here we have the input impedance of first uh, filter as Zi1, output impedance is J do one And uh, this VO1 is the open circuited output voltage. That means uh, if you see on the output side, we will have this uh, J01 impedance and then the voltage source, which will be VO1. Similarly, for the uh, second, here we have uh, J2 and uh, here we will have certain impedance and this uh, is going to be V out and here we have J die one. So this is the complete detail of the cascade. So as I pointed out, we want to express this V out finally in terms of V in and uh, H1, H2 and maybe some of these impedances. So what we will do, we will start the derivation from the output side and move it towards the input side. So we know that uh, uh, this output for the second one, which is also going to be the output for the uh, complete filter. And uh, let me also point out that ultimately what we want, we want this entire circuit to be represented by uh, an equivalent filter. That means uh, there will be a block which uh, will have transfer function H and output here is going to be same as this output that we are getting from the cascade. 
And then we have the same input here, V in, connected here, in this way. So we want to know what will be this H, the overall transfer function, in terms of these uh, individual transfer functions and uh, maybe some of the impedances. So we first express the output uh, with the help of the transfer function of the first uh, circuit or the final circuit, that means H2. So from the definition, uh, V out is going to be H2 into VI2, the input to the uh, this second filter. Now we can see that uh, this input uh, is input across J I2 and which is being excited VI by VO1 and uh, with internal impedance of J do one. So there is a simple loop here uh, consisting of two impedances and source. So we can write what will be VI2 and this can be written with the help of voltage division formula. So now we have say equation one and we have equation two. So we have started, we started from output and we have been able to reach to uh, this VI2 location or in fact uh, VI1, VO1. So we have equation two, which uh, was dependent upon VO1. So we want to convert this VO1 into VI1 and finally in terms of V in. So we can write the definition for this H1. That means the open circuited output voltage is going to be H1 into VI1. Where uh, this VI1, we know that can be written with the help of uh, voltage division formula in this loop, input loop, where VI1 is equal to ZI1 divided by ZI1 plus RS into V in. So this is uh, equation three and this is equation four. So here we can see that uh, this is uh, V in that we want on the right hand side and V out on the left hand side. So here we can see that VI appears uh, uh, in three on right hand side and on four in the left hand side. Similarly, VO1 you can see here is on left side, but uh, in equation two it is on right side. Uh, VI2 left side in equation two, but on right hand side in equation one. And then we have uh, our final V out which we want. So we can multiply all the four equations. And so when we multiply all the four equations, uh, we will get rid of all the intermediate voltages. And what we will be left here is V out equal to uh, this factor determined by the impedances and the product of two transfer function and the final input. So here we see that uh, final output not only depends upon the two transfer functions, but it also depends upon impedances. So at this stage, if we compare, uh, this whole thing is going to be HS, the transfer function of the uh, equivalent circuit represented by cascade of H1 and H2. So here we would like to uh, simplify the scenario and uh, we would like that uh, this final uh, transfer function is simply product of the individual transfer functions independent of uh, their impedances. That means we want to get rid of this uh, impedance factor. So we will see that uh, what we have to do so that uh, uh, the transfer function relation is uh, the simplest of this type. So there are actually two conditions under which uh, we will be able to get a uh, simple relation. That means H1, H2, V, in. So there are two ways in which this can be achieved. First technique is, uh, or the condition is, that uh, input impedance of all the filters is infinite. Right. So now here we can see that if input impedance of all the filters is infinite, then we see that this factor, this becomes 
equal to 1. Similarly, this factor, this will also become equal to 1. For z i 1 to infinity. So under this condition, uh, we are able to remove this impedance dependent factor and uh, transfer function will uh, get represented by this way. So, which is what we wanted. Now the second uh, condition under which this can be done is related with the output impedance. So our previous or the first condition was in terms of input impedance. So uh, similar condition can be obtained if we focus on the output impedances also. So if the output impedance of all the filters is zero along with that of the source. So RS can be looked as the output impedance of the source. So if uh, all the output impedances are zero, then also we arrive at the same relation. So here we can see that uh, when we make all these uh, output impedances equal to zero, that means this RS is equal to zero and J01 is equal to zero. Then we can see that uh, this factor, this becomes one, this factor also, this becomes one. So in this uh, scenario also, the transfer function uh, is simply the product of the two individual transfer functions. So now we have to see that which of uh, these two can be implemented uh, with the help of uh, active uh, first order or second order circuit that we have <coughs> considered. So here uh, we will be always uh, assuming that our op -amp is ideal. So for the ideal op -amp, we know that uh, J dot is zero and Z in is infinite. And uh, for the source, we can always uh, define, we can take RS is equal to zero, or even if we do not take RS is equal to zero, what one can do is, one can define the uh, transfer function in terms of uh, voltages that we see here at the input of the first circuit. So if we always represent in terms of uh, uh, immediate input at the first circuit, then we won't have to worry about, we will stop here. We won't go for the fourth equation. So in that case, uh, we will multiply equation one, two and three. And what we will get is VO is equal to, the output is equal to Z I2 divided by J I2 plus J01 into H2 H1 VI1 here. So this uh, on the input side, the RS can be held in. Even if it is there, you just define with respect to the immediate input. And uh, in that case also, uh, we will be able to represent the transfer function as the product of the two transfer functions and uh, with output impedance of the first one to be zero. So the crucial uh, part is going to be that op amp has to be ideal and uh, this will then uh, ensure output impedance zero. Although the op amp uh, ensures input impedance to be zero, but we'll see that the uh, active filter that we design based on uh, this op amp will not have uh, input impedance to be infinite. So here we have ideal op amp. So although internally it has Z i to be infinite, but the problem is that uh, uh, it is being fed by uh, additional circuit. So even if it is infinite, we have this additional circuit. So the input impedance that we will see here is uh, no longer going to be infinite. Similarly for the cell and key also, you can see that uh, if this is my input, then the input impedance here for cell and key also is no longer infinite. So the first uh, technique of uh, 
simplifying the cascading, that means keeping the input impedance uh, infinite, uh, cannot be implemented even though uh, op amps are ideal. However, if we see the second condition, that means the output impedance to be infinite, sorry, zero, then uh, that can be implemented. Because uh, we know that the output impedance for these two op amps, so for example, here, we will have this kind of scenario. So here also we have this kind of scenario. So now if you look into this, what you see is one path with zero impedance and there is another path which has certain finite impedance. So so J out is going to be zero. Similarly here also, if you find out J out, so, or, so there will be three paths this part with zero impedance, this which will have certain impedance, and this again will have certain impedance. So there is always a path with zero impedance through the op amp. So J out is always going to be zero. So if we uh, cascade these circuits, first order or second order, the output impedances of individual circuits uh, is going to be zero, so cascading is possible and the transfer function will be simply product of the two individual transfer functions. So we have derived this for the uh, cascade of uh, two filters, but the same uh, conclusion will be valid if we cascade n number of filters. So under this condition, J do is equal to zero, uh, the output will always be product of the transfer function of each of the filters and the input. So here this input, let me again uh, point out, uh, could be input with RS is equal to zero or second possibility is this V in is actually the input to the first stage, even if RS is not zero. <clears throat> so now we find that uh, any higher order filters fortunately can be now uh, implemented uh, in terms of simpler filters. So if we have the first order, of course, there will be only one block. Even for second order, there will be only one block, one circuit. But once we go third and higher order filter cases, then uh, we can always represent this as uh, sum of two simple filters. Third order is 1 plus 2, fourth is 2 plus 2, fifth is 1 plus 2 plus 2. So this cascading can always be used to uh, represent any higher order filter. And here, uh, these uh, parameters are written, and these are the basically the coefficients. For example, for the first order, the transfer function uh, is going to be given by AS plus 1. Similarly, for the second order, transfer function will be given by say B1 S square plus A1 S plus 1. So keep in mind that for all these uh, transfer functions, DC gain is equal to 1. And uh, corner frequency is also equal to 1. So these transfer function, they are normalized with respect to DC gain and with respect to the corner frequency. So these are the uh, coefficients uh, for the respective transfer functions. Now we will use this idea to design uh, one Butterworth filter. So the design will of course will start with the given uh, quantities which is uh, going to be filter specification and uh, sometimes this is represented graphically also called template. 
So we are now going to uh, list all the steps that will be required in designing uh, this Butterworth uh, filter. And then uh, we will take one specific uh, example and trace all these steps. So first step is of course to ask uh, whether uh, the filter is going to be active or passive. And uh, in this case, so uh, we are going to take active one. Uh, primarily because this allows the cascading of the simpler filters. Keep in mind that this cascading usually doesn't work in, for the passive architecture. If the individual filters are passive. Because uh, you will not be able to ensure output impedance uh, equal to zero. So active not only uh, implies uh, cascading or allows cascading, but it also uh, gives gain at DC. So these are the two uh, plus points of active version. And since we uh, typically after this one has to ask uh, whether the filter is going to be a Butterworth type or JV shift type, that means uh, uh, which type of polynomial will uh, decide the uh, transfer function H. So as I have pointed out, uh, we are going to talk about Butterworth type, but uh, from the specification, uh, by looking at the ripple, if there is any ripple, then most likely it is going to be JV shift. If there is no ripple, then it will be Butterworth. <clears throat> so once this has been decided, uh, we have to uh, find out the filter order, which will be a parameter n in the transfer function of the filter. So this order uh, we need to find out because uh, we just now saw that uh, any higher order filter can be represented as cascade of uh, sufficient number of filters. So this n will decide how many smaller filters will be there in the cascade. So once the order has been decided, we have to find out uh, what is the corner frequency uh, because uh, uh, I pointed out that uh, the transfer function that uh, was shown uh, for the cascaded architecture uh, has corner frequency is equal to one. But the circuit that we will be using to represent those, they will have certain finite corner frequency. So these two parameters, they have to be related. We will talk about these uh, in more detail uh, in step uh, six. So we have to find out, say, for example, Butterworth minus 3 dB frequency. And uh, these frequency, they are uh, represented by a few other symbols also, like omega n or omega c. So once we have found out the corner frequency and the order, we have to split the transfer function uh, into smaller transfer function, first order and second order. So for that, uh, we have to find out the transfer function of the complete uh, filter with order n. So there are two ways in which uh, that can be done. Actually, there is a one way only, and that is, uh, uh, for example, for the Butterworth case, where the transfer function uh, magnitude is given by this expression. So this is the expression for the magnitude. Keep in mind, this is the magnitude, and that is why we have square root. So we need to find out H from uh, this a square, and then from here we have to find out H. So that can be done uh, by finding out the square root of, uh, sorry, the roots of uh, this denominator, and then factorizing the denominator, this denominator. So uh, from there we will have H square, and then we take one of the factors, because H square is H into H conjugate. So from there, we are able to find out the transfer function. So this is a slightly tedious process, which we will not do here. So this has already been done, and the table has been created uh, for uh, this uh, transfer function. That means whatever order may be the order, uh, for that, uh, all those smaller transfer functions, they have already been found out and tabulated. 
So this is what we will do. We will simply pick up uh, the smaller uh, transfer function, first order, second order, for the Butterworth transfer function from the table. And this table uh, has actually been created by following the uh, step 5.1. So as I pointed out here in the architecture, that uh, transfer function, they will be tabulated in this form. That means they will be specified uh, as coefficient B1, A1, or this coefficient A for the first order. So most important thing to note here is that they are actually having DC gain one, omega naught is equal to one. That means they are normalized. Normalized with respect to gain and corner frequency. So the sixth step is going to be that we will denormalize them with respect to corner frequency and gain. So this way we will get the uh, exact transfer function uh, for our uh, circuit. Now we have uh, individual transfer function and those individual transfer functions uh, have to be implemented by specific circuits. So for example, for uh, first order, we have already seen that there will be two version, either non-inverting or inverting. So we will have to choose which of these two we want to pick. For the second order, is we have seen only cell and key up till now, but later on we will see that there are uh, other circuits also, which represent second order active filters. So uh, we have to choose which of these combination we want to uh, use for implementing the individual transfer function that we have obtained from the table. Now, once we uh, look at the circuit, uh, we have supposed uh, choosing non-inverting one here and silent key here. So they will be dependent upon certain registers and capacitors, right? So designing the filters actually, uh, you can see that uh, involves uh, splitting into cascade and then finding out the uh, values of the registers and capacitors which appear in the those smaller circuits. So this eighth step is going to be very crucial one. Uh, where uh, we will be setting up equations for finding out all the registers and capacitors that will appear in either first order or the second order circuit that we have selected. So this we do by comparing the uh, first order transfer function from the table after denormalization, of course, with the circuit that we have chosen. Similarly, uh, comparing the transfer function of the second order cell and key circuit with the second order denormalized circuit that we have obtained from the table. So that will lead to a number of equations and those equations uh, finally have to be solved for finding out the registers and capacitors value. But we will see that uh, number of equations will always be uh, less than number of equations, uh, unknowns. So number of equations will always be less than number of unknowns. So that means we will always have to uh, make choices for some of the values of the uh, components. And uh, typically we will try to choose values for the capacitors because uh, if we try to implement in uh, lab in discrete form, uh, we have more restriction on the values of capacitors than on the registers. So we will choose capacitors value and uh, solve for register values. Now let us take one example specific example for uh, this Butterworth filter design.
So it is already pointed out that this is Butterworth. But anyway, from the specification also, this can be concluded. So what we have been given is so uh, pass band value of minus 0.35 dB at frequency of 1.25 megahertz. So we are going to have say this kind of So our response is something like this here. This is the transfer function that we have to implement. And what we have been given is so uh, that at F1 is equal to 1.25 megahertz, the value is minus 0 0.35 dB. And at F2 is equal to 2.5 megahertz. The value is equal to minus 7.5 dB. 